So NVIDIA says forget native resolution, DLSS and similar upscaling technologies are your future. What do you think about that? Basically it comes down to your actual GPU is not gonna have the super powerful hardware going into the future that we would expect coming from, I don't know, a 3090 or maybe where stuff was still a little bit more normal. Starting with the RTX 4000, don't even take this as a rumor because NVIDIA's already done it. Like basically look at like the 4060 Ti, 4070 Ti, they're all pretty much limited, you know, technically. They have a lot slower memory width bus. They're generally going to be, you know, not as like hardware loaded as something from RTX 3000 if we make a direct comparison. So, of course, the 4090 is going to be a little bit of an exception, but that's also going to benefit from whatever's happening, or you could say it's going to be negatively affected. So, we can see by what Nvidia has done with RTX. X4000, that's the path that they're going with. They're really pushing DLSS. I mean, you know, now Cyberpunk is going to come out. They come out with the update. It's going to come out with the DLC. They're pushing 3.5 with ray reconstruction. So, what, what does that mean for gamers? No doubt that if you tell a gamer that, you know, upscaling is going to be your future, you guys, you're going to be a little angry, right? You're going to be a little mad because you feel like you're getting a little bit, you know, you're not getting what you're supposed to get in terms of the GPU hardware performance. But NVIDIA is saying that maybe the best image quality is actually going to come when you use a type of upscaler. If you hear something like that, is it going to make you change your mind? Of course, you're going to think about latency, right? And now let's hear a word from our sponsor, VIP-CDKDeals.com, a Windows 10 Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You want to go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click add activate and now let's go back to the video because even with dlss3 that has that frame interpolation what it does people call it fake frames these ai generated frames it does make it smoother but of course it adds some latency and then you have nvidia reflex to kind of offset that you know negative latency latency is basically just how long it takes you know you have a, like a mouse actually just happens to be a cyberpunk mouse i didn't even plan this but um, I don't want to go into like an ASMR video here, but from the second you click your mouse and to the reaction on your screen, if you have like a high refresh rate screen, that's how you're going to be able to judge the latency. Obviously gamers, especially those playing on high refresh rate monitors at competitive games, you're going to want a really fast interaction, something that frame interpolation kind of takes away from. So far, a lot of the games that have been great with DLSS 3 have been things that are like first person AAA titles, you know, games that you don't have to have like call of duty fast reflexes for example even though that does have the regular version of dlss without frame interpolation so that's the path that nvidia wants us to go in now this is kind of a weird thing that I don't think we can avoid because first, let's get with reality here. Why am I talking mostly about Nvidia, not AMD or Intel? Both of those other companies also have upscalers. AMD has FSR with the upcoming FSR 3 being probably the closest thing to DLSS 3, even though it's going to be, you know, be able to be used on a wider range of hardware. Intel obviously has their upscaler as well, the XCSS. But obviously, NVIDIA is just the dominant player in the market. And one huge point that I don't think people are going to, you know, you're not going to be able to like avoid upscaling technology. If you think about how much money NVIDIA is both investing in and making, not from the gamer market, but from the AI data center market, look at their last quarterly results. It's an insane amount of money. Their stock has gone up, you know, a serious amount. So that means that they're going to pour a lot of money into things directed towards AI. Part of that is going to trickle back down to the GPU sector. I mean, look at DLSS and all these type of technologies. Even when the NVIDIA CEO was asked if they're going to like ignore gaming and just do data center stuff, he was, you know, he, he was mad at that question because he pointed back to stuff like DLSS and things like that, how it's a vital part and actually gaming gets some of these early type of AI technologies. So in a sense, that's certainly going to be our future. NVIDIA is just dominant. If we disagree and we think we should have, you know, powerful GPUs at native uh, resolutions, that's one thing. If NVIDIA says that they want to go a different direction, they're the ones making the GPUs. And if the product is good is where it's going to matter, because if it doesn't sell, 
if obviously NVIDIA is going to change their game plan, they're going to be, or if competition um, pops up, they're going to have to say, well, this path didn't work. We have to adjust. But if what they're saying actually in the future ends up being true that let's say if you use DLSS 3.5 and the performance is much better, it's smooth, latency is really well mitigated, well controlled. And let's say if the image quality actually is better, I mean, I've seen examples of DLSS where maybe it is better in some cases than native. So I could definitely see that as a realistic possibility. Will gamers eventually get used to it. When people look back at RTX 4000, they're gonna look at it as like a growing pain type of generation. This is when a lot of these changes are actually happening. We still expect powerful hardware like the 4090, but we are also getting less powerful hardware like the 4060 Ti that has DLSS already baked in. So maybe by next generation, the GPUs are gonna be more even across the board where it's gonna be mostly maybe slightly underpowered technically the hardware, but with a very, you could say, overpowered AI or software system. So NVIDIA may actually transfer into becoming more of like a software side player instead of looking at a GPU as purely like a hardware product. And then I guess if you follow that line of reasoning, who's not to say that in the far off future, just like Apple has done with their M1 and M2 processors, if it's not going to be just one chip, if it can be so powerful and just on a much smaller area, Area that puts out less power, who's not to say that like the 4090 equivalent, let's say in five or 10 years, can't be something already, maybe even integrated with a CPU that's very, very small, very efficient, and it's using you know advanced software to basically give you that same graphical performance where games still look really good, just a much smaller package. Because I guess if you look at even like the 4090, maybe how much more could they have gone really in terms of like the power consumption? I mean, households have a limit, like your, you know, your actual wall outlet has a limit. So if they start going to 600 watts, 800 watts, thousand watts you can't really push it that far or else it's only going to be like a commercial generator or a commercial building that can actually sustain that type of power so it makes sense that okay maybe they could have gone with like a 5090 that has 600 watts maybe still up to that point it would have been realistic but pretty soon in order to keep achieving better performance i mean nvidia says that moore's law is dead because of this very factor uh, they can't just make it faster you know considering the power constraints and everything else without jumping back into the software side so i kind of see where they're trying to get at it but we're gonna have to see what actually happens because as of right now gamers aren't particularly happy with that but it could be just a transition period and maybe in the future games are going to be even more impressive visually while demanding less of hardware now a particular danger here like with remnant 2 for example a game that was sort of built around the developer expecting gamers to use upscaling if the game developers themselves expect upscaling to always be used maybe if they get a little bit lazy in the optimization of the actual game that could prove some serious growing pains already as we've seen this year we had many games that just didn't perform that well out of the box some games of course did other games really not that well so if moving forward developers expect to use upscalers in every single one of their games either they really perfect it or i don't know we may have issues where Games are just not going to come out very, very polished because of, you know, lazy developers or what have you. And that's not going to create a good environment for gamers because when gamers get a bad game that's hyped up, they get really mad. You'll see the negative Steam reviews and the game typically does poorly. Even Cyberpunk, which you see how much NVIDIA pushes it, it had sort of a very sketchy beginning because of some optimization issues and the sort of, you know, public opinion against it wasn't that good. It took a long time for people to actually you know cozy up to that game and become a little bit more comfortable recommending it and playing it and it's really only until this recent 2.0 patch that the game has really reached a higher level in terms of its optimization so it took a very long time now we'll see what happens in the future with upscalers i want to know what you guys think down below do you think that gpus are going to be less powerful in terms of like the physical hardware but the software side is going to be much more incredible perhaps is it really going to be better than native resolution? We'll see. It really is a bit open-ended right now, but NVIDIA is pushing in that direction, so something for us to be aware about. 
back guys so remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video